Let me start by saying that necrotizing enterocolitis or NEC is probably one of the worst diseases that babies can get in the intensive care unit. Everybody hates it. It is awful. Parents, doctors, it really is the bane of our existence. I'm Dr. Ford. I'm a neonatologist. I've been practicing close to 15 years as a pediatrician and neonatologist, and I have a lot of experience in NEC. So let me tell you what NEC is all about. So, a lot of people actually think that neck has to do with infection, that there's an infection. Sometimes people say to the parents, there is an infection in your gut and that's what's causing on. And that is true to a certain degree. The reality of neck is that it is an inflammatory disease. What does that mean? It means it starts as inflammation in the gut, in the intestines. So there's basically a lot of, you know, friable, nasty tissue that gets inflamed and the bacteria in there, well, they have a party. Imagine you've got, you know, a, a house there, the, the, you got the music going on and you got the bacteria in the car, you know, they're going right out there, they watch the house and they're like, whoa, man, that party looks awesome. And so they go knock, they're in, and they're, they're calling all their friends, they're inviting, come on, come on, come on, this party's awesome. That's actually what happens in the gut. The party starts as the inflammation, and then the bacteria will seep into the walls of the intestines. Then they call their buddies. You get more bacteria and more bacteria and more bacteria, and you get the gist of it you essentially get overwhelming growth of bacteria. And when you have that, and the party is busting through the seams, well, there's gonna be some idiot that will probably throw something and crack that wall, break that wall, tear that wall down, whatever it is, and that's what can happen in the intestines. That's what we call stage three or perforation. So the intestinal tissue, the lining of the wall will now break up. You get a hole through that and then stool goes right through that into the abdominal cavity, into your belly. Stool in the belly, no bueno. This is badness. So this is what happens essentially with necrotizing enterocolitis. So what can we do to prevent this? Well. One thing you can do is that it's been shown that maternal breast milk can help decrease the risk of that. Essentially, maternal breast milk uh, can act as police, right? You got all this bacteria in there, the party started, the police comes by, says, whoa, what are you guys doing? You know, party needs to end right now. So the bacteria that's, hey, you know, police is here, I'm gonna keep on going. So. That way it sort of helps to decrease the risk. It decreases the inflammation so there's no big party for the bacteria to get in there and cause trouble, all right? That's the goal of using that. That does not mean that formula causes this. There's no formula that goes into the gut, causes a ton of inflammation, and causes the party to act up and call more bacteria, okay? That's not the case. It is the milk, maternal breast milk or donor breast milk that can help decrease the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis. That's the goal. Another thing that can help bring inflammation down is if you quiet the gut. Again, imagine giving it time, right? You start that party, the party's getting loud, you bring the loudness down, you bring the party down, everybody quiets down, they get a little tired, and so the party doesn't build up. The same idea. Right? The goal of going MPO, meaning no food, no eating, is that it calms the gut down so you can finally be able to get some rest, bring the inflammation down so that the bacteria doesn't get in the gut. Even if it tries to knock on the door, everybody's sleeping. So no bacteria gets in, no party, no neck. That's the idea. One caveat is that you cannot go too long NPO on those itty bitty tiny babies. You cannot go without feeding. It has actually been shown to increase the risk of infection and inflammation and therefore neck. Yeah, we can't wait. It's either too little or too much. So 
you want to go with a little bit MPO, you don't want to prolong. The longer you don't feed, the worse it is for the gut. That's why we try and feed as early as possible, but we do it with small amounts that we call trophix. Trophix is a way to kind of go really slow, prime the gut, start the party, but the volume's not too high, so it's a fun party, but it's not overwhelming. You don't invite all the kids you don't even know, and it causes a riot, and they tear everything down, and then mom comes in, and then it's like, oh my God, what are you doing with the party? And you know what I mean, eh, we'll just let's leave it there. So that can definitely help, doing the formula, doing the MPO. So those are things that can be preventive. There is this thing that we're hoping, hoping will really help and some units that are already using this and this is called probiotics. What's probiotics? Well, probiotics will actually, they're actually bacteria, the good kind, that will go in and calm things down. These are your parents. Yeah, the kids start in the party, inviting all the friends and the parents get into town, they knock on the door, they go in and say, hey, stop that party. You need to calm that down. Maybe you can stay with your friends, but you turn the music down, we're going to sleep, we're gonna watch TV in the room, so chill. That's what probiotics will do. Good bacteria comes in, they calm things down, they stop the party before it gets too insane. So, that's the goal and the role of probiotics. So now we have milk, you know, maternal breast milk. We wanna feed as early as possible, slow, quiet, quiet the inflammation down, don't try and go too long without feeding. And then number three, like I said, probiotics. These things can really help. Sometimes you do everything right. You do absolutely everything right. And still neck happens. And this is because premature, the premature gut has some area where they might not be getting some good blood flow. The tiny, tiny, tiny blood vessels. It's really hard for blood to get into every single spot in the intestines. So there are some areas, they're called watershed areas in the intestines, where they're not getting uh, all that great perfusion and blood flow, and those are at risk for getting neck and even perforation, even that little tear, okay? It's like a spot in the neighborhood where the police just doesn't drive by or check on you or the neighborhood watch or, you know, all, the, all those things. So those areas are more prone to big parties and bad necks. So that can happen in these premature babies. You can do absolutely everything right, but it can still cause neck. This is why I hate necrotizing enterocolitis because babies can be doing amazing and within hours, they can get super sick. I don't even wanna say the word, but uh, uh, absolutely hate it. Okay, this is a quick overview of what neck is. You know, please, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more information on babies in general, babies in the NICU, sick babies, healthy babies, everything. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, down here in the comment section, go ahead and add your comment, and I will see you with the next video. Later.